start off with level the 16 we got some questions and then uh, 17 and 18 so all right look look at verse 11 uh, see what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hand it kind of reminds me of my sermon introduction on Sunday you know you wonder why are some things in the Bible right but in there for a reason but little uh, admission from the Apostle Paul, see what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hand. Um, I thought of a uh, kind of a cross-reference, which maybe sheds light on this. Um, it's at 2 Corinthians um, chapter 12, where uh, that's where um, you know Paul talks about uh, his thorn in his flesh. Remember that? Mm -hmm. There was given me this, you know, messenger of Satan, the thorn in my flesh, and uh, three times I pleaded with the Lord, take it away from me, but he said what? He said, my grace is sufficient, is sufficient for thee. My power is made perfect, complete in your weakness. And I wonder, you know, some, we wonder what was Paul's thorn in his flesh? Eyesight. Yeah, some, some wonder if maybe it was a uh, failing eyesight which might make sense with yes. this. If you, if you picture Paul with poor eyes writing with large letters. Yeah. I've also heard it thrown out that maybe Paul had like epilepsy or something, oh. you know, a little shaky. So as he wrote, you know, letters were larger. So I think there's at least one other letter that he admits that someone was his personal scribe, which again, which maybe a thorn in his flesh and, and feeling eyesight or epilepsy I was wondering because we've talked about his eyesight, but I, in recent years, I was wondering if it had anything to do with him going blind at his conversion, even though he got his sight back. But physically, it might have done, as years went on, something to his eyesight. Yeah. To weaken the eyesight, you know, for that, too. But, well, that's you know, possible, that yeah. Good, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I guess we'll get to heaven, right? Yeah, we'll of a long time so we can get answers to all these questions right so that's interesting so uh, and we go on all right verse 12 uh, those who want to make a good impression outwardly are trying to compel you to be circumcised right so he's he's circling back to those <coughs> what do we call them the, the Judaizers yeah. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. We'll just kind of stop maybe right there and look at our workbook. Yeah, those who want to make a good impression outwardly. Just refers to the teachers who have moved in on Paul's Galatian congregations. Yeah, we heard of them way back in chapter 1, verse 7. <coughs> you want to make a good impression outwardly. What does that mean? I don't know. Maybe, wow, look look how this church is growing. Look at all the people getting <coughs> circumcised. Um, so what was their motivation for making that good outward impression? From being persecuted. Yeah. What's that? To, to keep from being persecuted. Okay, yeah. To avoid being persecuted. So, for the cross of Christ. Um, so, how do we take that, maybe? How do we understand this? Same reason Peter at the fire said to the girl, I don't know Christ. I don't know. Okay. Same reason. Yeah. So, not to stand out. Not to stand out, yeah. You know, when we, when we think of... Uh, you know, uh, mainstream religion, right? Um, you know, what, you know, th you know, things like universalism and, and pluralism. What do we mean by that? Very, everybody's going to heaven. Everybody's going to heaven, right? Everybody who is good, does good. You know, eh, except for the Adolf Hitlers and the Jeffrey Dahmers, right? But everybody else gets to heaven. That's universalism, right? Uh, pluralism is what? A little different. 
religions lead to the same end. Yeah, many different ways, right? But the same outcome, right? So, you know, Buddhists, they've got their path, you know, and uh, Jews have their path. Christians, you got yours, right? Uh, Native American Indians, right? The great spirit gets you to the happy hunting grounds, but in the end, it's all the same, right? Um, and if you if you go against that, right? If you're gonna, you know, I always forget. I'm not a fisherman, but what which which fish swims upstream? Trout or salmon? Salmon. 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 All right. <clears throat> <laughs> right. If, if if you believe um. You know, in the Bible, right, there's, there, there's one way, right? No one comes to the Father through, through, me. through me. Yeah, right? Uh, you know, salvation is found, you know, in no one else. There's no other name under heaven <coughs> given to men by which we must be saved. And if you've got that narrow view, right, you know, you're going to be a target and, and unpopular. And, 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 and be persecuted, right? And, and you know, the Judaizers' um, religion, you know, that, 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 that appealed to people, right? Be good and get a reward, right? Do good, God will pat you on the back, right? You, you, come on, you can kick in for your salvation, have a little minor surgery performed. Yeah? Well, this happens today. Our son uh, was at the LWMS convention this a week or so ago in La Crosse, and part of the convention was that they offered a tour of La Crosse area. Uh, my wife's from Ben's from La Crosse. We know it well. It was the uh, Owls? And it was the Owls. What did I say? The LWMS. LWMS. Sorry. Owls. Anyway, they had a tour, and the lady who conducted the tour then referred to the bluffs and all that along the Mississippi as millions of years. And he said, not one person, including himself, he was really down on himself, said one thing to say, we don't believe that. Not one person said that. That's the same thing, isn't it? That you don't want to stand out and say to someone conducting a tour, we don't believe that this is a different group. The millions of years for the bluffs, no, God created it. It's not millions of years. Who was on the tour? Or? The Our owls. son, the owls were on a tour at their convention in La Crosse. Yeah, I don't know if they were, you're saying they were, they were being ashamed to stand up for the truth or what? Or? Well, they just didn't want to make waves, I don't think. He, he was surprised no one yeah. said anything, including himself. Yeah. Yeah, or is it a case, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it was part of their convention, this person's given the tour, but she wasn't part of the convention. It was an outsider given it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. You know, would I have said something, or I don't, you know, I mean, what was that going to do, do good or do harm, or are you going to convince the person, or I don't know. Yeah. I mean, Peter wasn't going to convince the girl at the oh. fire. Yeah. You know, we, I think we're going to get an application a bit later about, you know, um, yeah, the kinds of topics you discuss with your non-Lutheran neighbor, you know, and you know, we 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 don't. You know, every Bible teaching is important, no doubt about it. Um, um, you know, but to talk about boasting above all in the cross of Christ, that's we can get to that in a bit. So we'll circle back to that, Wayne. So <clears throat> you know, maybe the people. I'm just trying to put the best construction on this, right? Take. Take their words and actions in the kindest possible way. Maybe they were just kind of caught off guard. She said what and didn't know the best way to respond, you know. So, but, but you know, it's unfortunate, right? When, you know, we see the glory, the handiwork of God and what's been created, but many don't, do they? Right? How can something so beautiful evolve, right? Those bluffs of the cross. I'm getting some looks from you. Are you all right? Or not happy with what I said? Or um... I'm thinking the same thing. We were out at the Royal Gorge out in Colorado. We were driving through the mountains and seeing the folds in the in the, the where the rocks stand up 
you know, where there's mud formed and, and all of that. Um, it was just the two of us, but wherever you look, you can see the signs of God, but where do you pick? I mean, that wasn't the place for a conversation with the person. If the whole group had said something, it wouldn't have changed her spiel. Yeah, they're hard to handle these, you know. Well, that would be my concern, you know. I'll just comment on that only because uh, many, many years ago when Heath was living in Phoenix, uh, we took a trip out there and we met him up in the, the uh, areas of the, oh, the beautiful, where did we go, Sedona. So we did, we did a tour in Sedona and, in a Jeep. And the gal was doing the same thing about the billions of years and all this kind of stuff. And, and I was not strong enough, but Heath, you know, it was probably 18, 19 at the time, said, what do you say to those of us who don't believe that? I said, we don't believe that that's the case. And it just, all it did was just shut her up. <laughs> but, Another discussion. But I was proud of him because I, I thought, so maybe well, here I am, Dad, and I say nothing, and yeah. he says something. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this for that person. You know, if she was an unbeliever, you know, what creates faith? You know, it's the gospel of right. Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, and you accept creation as an article of faith. You know, and without faith, so yeah. There's work to be done, right? That's that's the bigger point, right? A lot of souls need to be reached. We're getting back to this. Um, number two, uh, you know, if, if, if those Judaizers, uh, you know, wanted to look good, make good impression, uh, talks about, you know, showing numerical results if a, if a teacher can show it. That puts an end to all questions about skill and effectiveness. So I wonder what they're getting at there. Obviously, I think in our schools, right, if, 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 if students test well, and we're grateful that in our well schools, they, they generally do that, um, which we think gives glory to God and also uh, does reflect well on the skill and the effectiveness of our teachers. But I think what we want to do here is maybe uh, in the context of Galatians, you know, take something like this into, into the church and um, how do we balance, um, you know, why isn't our church growing more, right? Why do some grow, others don't? You know, um, that's what I think this kind of wants to get at. Numbers in the church, that can be a topic for juicy discussion. Sometimes among pastors. Some, what the heck, 100 missions in 10 years? You know, you know, you know those are numbers, right? We shouldn't worry about that. That's a pretty simple task for God. Okay. <laughs> you know, some might say, well, numbers are mentioned on the day of Pentecost. 3,000 people were added to the church. <clears throat> right? Other thoughts? Joan, your hand is up for a little while. Either or. If we do our everyone outreach program, yes, our numbers are going to go up and we're going to be, and it's going to be a good thing. But then there's the Joel Osteens, too, that water down the gospel. They got big numbers. Okay, yeah. And what God requires of us is faithfulness. Okay, there you go. Thanks and for that bringing that into. doesn't into. come yep. as numbers, yep. always. And, and, and what are we able to control? You know, we... We witness, but well, he okay, makes the increase. there you go. So, you know, we can control uh, <coughs> sharing our faith, right? Um, you know, you know, Christmas is coming up in a couple of weeks. You can control people you invite, you know, maybe a neighbor or you have a friend you invite, you know, to come on Christmas Eve, whether or not they accept, you know, but you, you can control that, right? Um, and then when it comes to actually converting and, and creating faith and strengthening it, that's the Holy Spirit, right? 
Um, well, what did what did Paul say? Um, where is it? Is it Corinthians? You know, um, um, I planted and Apollos watered. But God gives the increase. Yeah, God gives. You know, God made it grow. Okay, so I mean, to the. The example I referenced before, you know, will we actually create 100 new churches over 10 years? I don't know. We're going to find out, I guess. There are plenty of naysayers saying, no way. <laughs> the Board for Omissions disagrees, but we'll see how God blesses it. And I like the phrase, it's not in the Bible, it's not one of Proverbs, Sol uh, Solomon's Proverbs. Um, if you aim for nothing, you'll hit it every time, right? <laughs> and that's not in the Bible, but if you aim for nothing, you'll always hit it. Personally, as a pastor for many years, my goal has been I want at least 10 adult confirmants per calendar year. I think the Wells average per church is like maybe 1.7 adult confirmants per year, right? So a lot of churches that just aren't growing, and sometimes, you know, maybe it's where they're located and so forth. Not saying they're not being faithful, um, uh, but you know, I pers personally like having a goal, right? Yeah. Now, that's up to God how many people will go through the Bible information class, right? Um, but I have a goal, right? And that drives me. Now I'm going to schedule two, at minimum of two BICs a year, one in January and one in August, okay? Uh, and like the one in January, then I work back October, November with the vicar. Now I'm working my prospect list, you know, and who am I inviting and talking to and, you know, trying to pin them down. You know, can you come in January once you win the class, right? So, Wayne? I think we should always be like our Savior who is always reaching out to the lost. So whatever it might be, so if we're running a school, then we're constantly trying to increase the enrollment. If we're in the choir and we hear someone could sing, we invite them. If we're at men's club, how would you like to come to men's club? We constantly should be promoting. That's that's what I think we're in the business doing. Then if they don't come, then we're disappointed. We keep on promoting. Oh, I like that. We like to see growth. Yep. Just to this number two here, uh, the question you know it talks about numerical results about the uh, skill and effectiveness. To me, you have to spell out and understand what skill and effectiveness is. Because, for example, uh, in Jody's thing about Joel Osteen or some of the mega, mega, mega churches, it may look like their numer numerical results are really great because they got 2,000 worship every Sunday. But, skill and effectiveness, are they preaching God's yeah. word? Are they preaching the gospel? So. Then, yeah. there, then there's no results. Yeah, because sure. Because that's not effective with what God intends. Absolutely. What, what yep. the word intends. So, yep. so that's where, that, I just, yeah. so I would disagree with the comment. So. Yeah, and then we don't want to, again, just in general, equate results with, no. with faithfulness or lack of faithfulness or lack of results with that too, right? Um, you know, you hear a lot, um, I mean, a lot, but, you know, we talk about new missions. What you don't hear about is what I sometimes am exposed to at the Board for Home Missions is when you have to, you have to put a mission to death, right? And John, you know that too, don't yeah. you? You know, sometimes missions, they, they, they aren't going forward. <coughs> um, and it, it might not be for lack of effort, right. uh, just sometimes, you know, it, it's just not going forward, you know. It's not growing, and and then then it becomes maybe a stewardship question, you know. Are we being good stewards of, of you know pumping resources into this, or is it time to you know end this mission and and then you know channel this somewhere else? Um, and you know those are hard decisions to make because. You know, there, there might be pastors involved and, and core group members. Um, so again, don't always equate lack of results means unfaithfulness. Just for some reason, God didn't give the increase. So 
just thinking back to some experiences I've had, how many of those closed missions actually come down to a restart? Mm. Because every now and then you yeah. do hear about restarts, and, yeah. and I, I've read about a couple recently. Yeah. You know, my experience more uh, often, those mission. are established churches right. that become a restart. Right. Right. Not so much. Yeah. It's Not an established the church. You know, so it's no yeah. longer a mission. It's on their own, but mm -hmm. they're going to restart yeah. with the help of the mission board. My sister's congregation down in Cambridge is struggling right now yeah. and whether they're going to close or whether they're yeah. going to let their members yeah. filter into yeah. other churches or whatever they're at yeah. that point a lot of wrestling with that yeah. some churches have relocated like yeah. for example Flint, michigan or yeah. that area see you know where the people are yeah see if you're yeah. a re restart you got to be willing to do that too and yeah. as they say all cards are on the let's deck. go on a verse what's next like like 13 <clears throat> Not even those who are circumcised obey the law. I, I think that would mean, you know, none of us keep it perfectly. Um, yet, or even those Judaizers are not keeping all of it. Uh, yet they want you to be circumcised that they may boast about your flesh. Boast about your flesh. Ah, oh, we got another one. Another <coughs> convert. Hey, you know, let's mark it somewhere. So here's this, this boasting. And then uh, verse 14, May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and an eye to the world. So boasting... In, in my Savior and in his cross. Yeah, so for these Judaizers, if you look at your notes, number three, uh, a physical body marked with the sign or the badge of circumcision signaled a convert. You got one more for the Jewish faith. Or maybe a combination. I suppose a combination of Christian Jewish. I mean, they weren't denying Christ as Savior, but they were saying you, you also have to follow the laws. Um, now, look at, uh, look at Matthew. Do you want to look up Matthew 23? Really, the Judaizers were no different than the Pharisees, right? Um, you know, the common denominator uh, advocating and pushing a, a work righteousness. And in Matthew 23, it's Holy Week, and Jesus still hasn't given up on those Pharisees. This is the chapter with the whoa, 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 right? He's really calling them to repent. Who's got verse 15? Get Bob, please. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You travel over land and sea to win, win a single convert, and when he becomes one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as you are. Oh, what does that mean? So I mean, you you travel over what? What did it say? <coughs> okay. So I mean, you know, we might say you're, you, they, they pound the pavement, right? They, they are working hard, sunrise to sunset, uh, evangelizing. Probably not a good word to use for them, because usually we mean they have to share the good news. But you know, they're they're promoting their message. And when you get someone who believes, right, for the Judaizers, all right, got circumcised. You make them, what did it say, twice as much? Twice as much a, a son of, of hell. A convert to hell. What does that mean? That don't sound good, John. I just have it in my study Bible here. It says, doubly zealous for ritual purification which fosters pride and false security 
and brought no salvation. Okay. You know, because, um, you know, for someone who, you know, believe the Judaizers and, you know, if you do this, you know, you, you're right with God. So, so their confidence is in what, what they've done or what they've had done to them, right? Um, and but that's not salvation by grace alone and by faith alone not works, right? So, so really these, the, 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 these, these converts, that, that's pretty hollow, right? That's, that's not a, a true, a, a good convert at all. Um, so it's really scary when you hear that twice as much of the yeah, yeah. number of hell. I mean, that's, that's, yeah. that's a strong statement. Yep, also uh, a warning to the one who led them to that too, that, yeah, right. you know, they're, this is this is on you. They're already on the road to hell. You're just greasing the skid. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leave a to Wayne, right? To play I know. It. Greasing the skids. <laughs> oh yeah. So. Okay, now oh, look, it lost you. Yeah. So the uh, Missouri Senate aren't allowed to come to communion in our church anymore. We're that far. Yeah, and that started back in 1961 when there, the, there was a split. Right. Okay, so, so um, yeah, so we, close communion, you know, we, uh, you know, it's for those, you know, who, uh, uh, you know, baptize believers who have been instructed and who are repentant for their sins and who are united in faith, okay? And... You know, we can't look in someone's heart to see the unity, so where do we look? Well, by what they <coughs> confess or, you know, your membership, because churches have doctrinal statements. Um, let's talk about boasting. Uh, I thought our moms taught us we shouldn't boast. Well, sometimes it's improper, sometimes it's good, it's godly, number four. Um, Got a couple of references here. How about half of you look up Jeremiah 9, the other half, 1 Corinthians 1. So Paul talks about boasting. The Judaizers wanted to boast about their converts. As they were greasing the skids, to quote Wayne. Paul wants to boast about the cross of Christ. So what's Jeremiah 9 say is, anyone find that one? Margaret? Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, let not the mighty man boast in his might, let not the rich man boast in his riches, but let him who boasts boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, declares the Lord. Oh, good. I think that, was that Jeremiah? That's not what my Jeremiah said. That was Jeremiah 9, yeah. What do you got there? That might have been the, was it, what, what translation is that one? Oh, you're Nehemiah. Oh, oh no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one there. Yes. No one there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it could happen. That's a good Sorry. one. No, no, no. Yeah, it's funny. My eyesight's going. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's all right. No, no. Um, so, uh, I think we got both sides of the coin there, boasting. What, what's improper to boast about, right? Self, my strength, my smarts, right? My stuff, right? All those are gifts that God has given me by grace. His mercies are new every morning. But rather boastful. What did, how did Jeremiah put it? Boasting and and the, the, the verse that you read. That he understands and knows me. Okay, knowing the Lord. Uh, and, and knowing him by faith and his righteousness. His salvation, his holiness. 
given to us. And then 1 Corinthians 1, uh, it, it, it's similar, 26 to 31. Joan, you got that one? Thank you. Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of the world and the despised things, and the things that are not, to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. All right, boasting in the Lord and his saving work. Um, you know, God didn't choose the what? The, the lowly, the despised. I forget what was all listed there, but he's really referring to who? All of us. Not all of us, right? God chose us, the lowly, despised, you know, weak, sinful. Touch grace. Joan, going to add something? I think of the disciples that he chose, with the exception of Judas. Judas. Um, Matthew was a despised tax collector, although he's probably the best one of the whole bunch. And Peter, James, and John were fishermen. Now, fishermen are not known for overly intelligent people necessarily. And he was... <laughs> hey, oh, I just got Bob jingle <laughs> going. Okay, throw, throw the tomatoes at me. <laughs> you, you think we know what but, you meant. But, but, uh, yeah. but I mean, look at how great those guys became and what wonderful witnesses for Christ they all were. Yeah. Yeah. Fisher. I mean, the... Uh, you know, the parable of the mustard seed, right? I mean, that's really what you're talking about, that from 12 apostles, right? Um, it grew. So. I just like the beginning here. It says, brothers, think of what you were when you were called. We were all called back in eternity. We were nothing. We weren't even born yet. We were nothing. We were not even a... You weren't even a thought. Glint in our <laughs> parents' eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. God knew us by name already then. That's good, John. Yep. All right, let's just keep uh, working our way through Galatians 6 here up to verse 15. Neither uh, circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What, what does that mean? doesn't mean anything. Right? It's not going to matter to your salvation you know, if you were circumcised or not. What, what, what counts is a new creation. And what does that mean? A new creation. Faith. Susan? Faith. Yeah, faith. Yeah. Faith. yeah, being reborn, right? Um, being converted. Uh, being quickened. You know, all, all different uh, uh, terms that we use referring to the Holy Spirit's work of bringing us to faith. Um, if you want to write down a cross-reference here, we're not going to look it up right now, but 2 Corinthians 5, I think it's 14 to 17. You know, the old has gone, the new has come. And what Paul says there explains that a little bit. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. <clears throat> a child of God and an heir of heaven. That's that's what counts. What were the verses? 2 Corinthians 5. Pretty sure 14 to 17. I don't want to give you the wrong section. Let's see, 5 to 17. Nope. No, that's not even, yeah, so, verse 17, verse 17 it is, yeah, especially. If anyone's in Christ, he has a new creation, the old has gone, the new has come, yeah. 
not so much verses 14 to 16, but verse 17. Once you were lost, now you are found. Yeah, it's basically it. Yeah. That's what counts. This is what counts. Um, and it says, peace uh, and mercy to all who follow this rule, even to the Israel of God. Well, let's say maybe the EHV translation of verse 16. I'm curious how they translate verse peace, 16. Peace and got? mercy on those who follow this rule, namely, on the Israel okay. of God. So pretty similar. Yeah. So this, this, this rule, this truth, that what counts as the new creation, well, peace. And, and mercy, indeed, right? We have peace with God. You know, we, we've received mercy for our sin. And namely, uh, to the, the Israel of God. Well, what? Now is Paul going back to uh, the descendants of Abraham, the Israel of God? So we want to... Uh, define what's meant by the Israel of God. Um, the heirs of heaven. Okay. Abraham's seed. Abraham's children. Okay. Uh, his spiritual children. Spiritual I mean, children. Yeah. So it would be the the Israel uh, would be you know all, all believers, all who are a new creation, all who trust in Christ. Um, and maybe I'll just let you um, look up those references at home so we can finish Galatians 6 today. But Romans and Galatians all talk about, um, you know, those who believe are the children of Abraham. And I guess I took some notes this morning in Romans 2. Uh, a man is a Jew inwardly, right? So um, you're all Jews. And, and again, there's... Not of Abraham's blood in our veins, but Abraham's faith is in our hearts, right? Um, really, what's the only way that our faith is different than Abraham's? Maybe a very, very minor difference. He was looking forward, we're looking back. Yeah, Abraham looked ahead, a Messiah will come. I trust that, and, and we look back. The Messiah came. Yep, Jesus Christ, but but really the same faith, right? It, um, so, and I think you know when you read some parts of the Bible, like, when it talks about all, you know, you, you, I, you see this sometimes. Some of the like TV evangelists, you know, the, the end times, you know, the world, you know, the world won't end till all of Israel is converted. You know, it says in Romans, all Israel will be saved. So that's going to happen before the end. <clears throat> the nation of Israel will all be converted. And it's like, uh, you know, that's not what it means. You know, all Israel it is, you know, Scripture interprets Scripture, right? Um, and even John 3.16 defines for us who Israel is. God so loved his world, gave his only son. Those who believe in him will not perish. Right? So, so when you're... Maybe for entertainment, you know, watching the TV evangelist, you know, when he talks that way, the flag goes up. This is a false teacher, right? And you've got to be careful. And the work of the God's work to do is, as the scripture says, to believe. Yeah. The work That's of God. the work of God, to believe. Yeah. It's not a cookbook of ideas of uh, things you will do this now and do this all and do this all. It's to believe in your Savior. Thank you. I turn the page, uh, just a few minutes yet. Uh, how, his word in my life, boasting in the cross of Christ. How can we do it? Uh, hmm. Your coffee kicked in yet? What about the Sunday morning liturgy? How can we boast? Um, the liturgy, the, the pattern that we follow, um, you know, which has an interaction, you know, between God and His people. 
might the Lord be with you and also with you. And, you know, we hear God's word and we confess our faith. And, uh, our, so we appreciate our, our, our way of worship. How can we boast in the cross of Christ? You know, the, the church here is part of, uh, I think, liturgical worship, right? And, and why do we appreciate the church here? Takes us through the life of Christ. All right. Every year, the main thing is the main thing. That's right. And if we don't follow it, then we're at the whim of the preacher. What do I want to talk about today? And you could go all over the map. But this preacher, the main thing has got to be the main thing. And every year, we review the life of our Savior. Right, that's uh, uh, we call the festival half of the church year, what like Advent through what like Easter, Pentecost. Pentecost, and then there's the non-festival half. We focus on the life of a Christian, but helps us boast in Christ. We're always keeping Christ before us, right? Every year, his birth, you know, his baptism, you know, you know, his death and resurrection, his ascension. How else can we boast? Adrian, please. Uh, I mean, I've always said this because I've, I've attended other churches before. Um, Lutheran, we have meat and potatoes in our, in our service on Sunday morning. I mean, it's God's word. There's a lot of actual reading of the Bible yeah. on Sunday morning. Thank you. Um, in part of the liturgy, not just like, you know, the preaching. But, yeah. I mean, the actual part, it's just not fluff. It's This is the Bible. That's what we're here for is to listen to God's word. Yeah. Well said. I think a lot of people appreciate that from the outside. Like, wow, you know, God's word is proclaimed. And I mean, three scripture readings, and you know, maybe a psalm, and then a, a you know a, a message. You know, twenty minutes on one of those readings or some of the verses. I mean, even the like the 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 liturgical songs, right? I mean, if you really focus on the words, they're rich. You know, I mean, they're, you know, and, and not to throw sticks or stones at, you know, let's say, a, you know, like a, a, a non-denominational church where, you know, the praise team, they, they sing a song and one refrain is repeated 30 times over and over. You know, and it's just, there's not much substance in there, not, not much really meat and potatoes for your faith. Kind of like singing Kumbaya every Sunday morning at church. That's not going to do much for you, right? So, is your hands still going? I was another? just going to say the same thing about the music. I mean, our, our hymns are also another reflection of having God's word and having, you know, the meat and potatoes, having, you know, true meaning to those songs. It's not just in there to make you feel good about being at church. Yeah. You feel good about yourself or making feel good about the situation it is you know it's also part of preaching and also learning about God's word and, and you know it's not just about yeah. making you feel good for being there you know some of the great hymns of faith in the Bible like you think of a Miriam song Moses' song after the Red Sea and all that you know God is praised by declaring the things that he's done right that's how we praise God by declaring the things that he's done. And that, that's the cross and the tomb and so forth. I still love Professor Tiefel at the Sim. Uh, he's a retired professor now, but uh, he taught worship for many years. And he, he would often say, you know, many Sunday you're going to walk out of the pulpit and say to yourself, thank God for good hymns today. Because <laughs> that sermon just bombed. You know? <laughs> but the hymns, I mean, like, you know, my, my new favorite hymn, and I was, I was, it was a pulpit bully on Sunday because I had the sermon, so I got to pick the hymns. I made you sing my new favorite hymn. Uh, you know, when I die, it will be part of my funeral. His robes for mine. I cannot <clears throat> sing that without tears in my eyes. And look at the words of that hymn. Um, it's just, you know, so... And that's just good stuff. What hymn number is that we, we worship? Is it 568, I want to say? You know, this 
Tifel also said this back in 1994, my senior year, Gentlemen, towards the end of your ministry, there'll probably be a new hymnal, and you'll be unhappy about it. <laughs> I don't know any of the hymn numbers anymore. You know, I used to know them all. You know, I, but now I got a. I don't, was it five sixty eight? His. I think so. I don't know. I probably grab one down there, right, but right. it's just like wow. And then I go do this. Go home and Google his robes from mine, Martin Luther College Choir. And I think one that Jacob was singing in a Jacob Price a few years ago, they sing it in their chapel, and it's just like, wow, you know. When Come to Key to Life Saturday, you'll hear it. <laughs> yeah. Martin Luther. Oh, College, yeah. They were coming, yeah, tomorrow. Today. No, today. today. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, thanks for, I forgot about that. Yeah. One o'clock. You can't call me early afternoon, John. Yeah. One o'clock. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so if people can fall asleep during my sermon, that's fine. But if you if you if you were singing his robes for mine, and you you know, Lord called you home the next day, I am sure you're in heaven. <laughs> There's a great hymn you sang, Bob. The, the, the school and the choir sang the psalm a couple weeks ago. Did they oh. preach? Did they preach the gospel? Yeah. Surely, I was that, surely I think, it was God who saves me. Yeah. Wow. I had to miss that. I was at our Savior that day, but yeah, I heard that was just tremendous. It was just yeah. awesome. Yeah. And that, you know, stuff like that helps our evangelism. Right? It's a joy to follow up to worship visitors when they come to St. Peter and are edified by the service and the singing and, you know, the choirs. Um, so, all right, let's just end with the uh, last two verses. Just read 17 and 18. Finally, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. Right? And Paul is saying, hey, don't give me grief. Right? He was persecuted. Um, you know, he, he was whipped. He was stoned. Uh, he probably literally had scars. Right? So don't give me a hard time. Right? I would not suffer all of this if this message wasn't true. And if Christ had not confronted me and called me and commissioned me to send to, and sent me out with this message. So, uh, get off my back, right? Uh, I, I, uh, and then the great, look, look how he ends positively, right? I mean, this, this is a letter where he, he did some scolding of them, right? Remember, this is the one letter where Paul did not anywhere say, I thank God for you in my prayers, right? He, you know, he, he scolded them a bit, but yet he ends in a loving way. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. Uh, amen. Wow, he still calls them what? Brothers, brothers and sisters, right? Yeah. Right? Um, as he... Appeal to them, do not forsake the gospel. Don't listen to those Judaizers. All right. Hey, we did it. Next week, John. Gospel of John. How's that sound? Should be good stuff. Okay. We'll end with a couple of prayers. I know Naomi couldn't be here.